Hi, my name is Reed Redden and I'm a sheep and goat specialist for Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. Here to talk to you a little bit about uh, quantifying parasite resistance to our different dewormers. Last week on Facebook Live, uh, we went through all the different classes of dewormers and how to best use them to prevent uh, parasite resistance from occurring. And this week we wanna to talk to you about how to measure parasite resistance and what you have kind of parasite resistance you may have on your farm for a number of different classes of, of dewormers. So there's two ways to go about doing this. The first is a drench right test. So a drench right test is where you would take a fecal sample from 10 different animals on your farm or ranch and send them to a laboratory. That laboratory would grow out those fecal samples uh, or grow out the parasites in the fecal samples in a petri dish if you will and then they would expose them to all of the different classes of dewormers that are commonly used in the United States. They would measure the effective kill rate that those wormers have on the parasites that they grew out in the lab and they would get you a report back. Um, there's only one laboratory in the United States that does this that I'm aware of and it's at the University of Georgia and Dr. Ray Kaplan's uh, laboratory is the one that provides that test. So most everything that I cover today um, is coming out of managing dewormer resistance. This is a fact sheet and it's at wormx.info is the website that you can find this fact sheet at. And so um, the drench right test is a, is, a, is a nice test. You don't have to have any equipment at home. You can send it off, but it can be fairly expensive and time consuming to, to send it off and get that done. Another test that you can do to measure dewormer resistance or parasite resistance to dewormers is what we call a fecal egg count reduction test. Now you can do this on your own farm and ranch or you can do it in cooperation with your local veterinarian. And so all that's needed to, to do this test is a microscope that's 100 power, um, some McMaster slides or these slides that have grids where you can count the um, the number of fecal egg count, or number of eggs that are in a fecal sample, and some basic equipment um, to, to conduct the test. Again, if you don't have any experience with this test, but you'd like to learn out more, more about doing it, there's fact sheets and videos on wormx.info. So if you're gonna provide, provide, uh, perform the test on your own, what we're gonna do is you need to have a group of animals that have parasites, that have a significant load of parasites, and uh, you're gonna drench them with one class of dewormer, an uh, maybe another class, or maybe a combination. Whatever you do, this test determines the uh, effectiveness of whatever your treatment was. So like I said before, you need 10 animals. Uh, when you treat them, take a fecal sample from at least 10 animals within that group. Now, once we quantify what each uh, fecal egg count is for each animal, we're gonna average all of them. And that's gonna be our baseline to start with because the drench you just gave them isn't gonna reduce fecal egg count for um, a week or so. So then a week to two weeks later, uh, I prefer 10 days, we'll come back, grab those same 10 animals, take another fecal sample from them, analyze each one of those individually and average it. So here is a theoretical example for a fecal egg count reduction test. So we had a group of animals that had a parasite load. Um, initially, they averaged 5,000 eggs per gram. We treated them, uh, came back 10 days later, and they averaged 1,000 eggs per gram. We subtract 1,000 from 5,000, that gives us 4,000. You take this 4,000, divide by the original uh, fecal egg count of 5,000, that gives us 0.8. We multiply by 100, and that is the percent effective kill rate that that dewormer had. So in this example, we would have an 80% effective kill rate, which 80% sounds pretty good, but in reality, we're on a slippery slope to resistance if you're getting an 80% kill rate. Um, had your second fecal egg count check been 500, we would walk through the same mathematical equation, and we would have had a 90% kill rate. So 90 is a good bit better than 80, but it's still indicating that 10% of the parasites have resistance to that particular dewormer, and resistance is coming. It's gonna come pretty quickly. Um, had it been 250, that would be a 95% kill rate. We want at least 95% kill rate, preferably 98, 99, 
and even higher uh, to determine that a drench or a dewormer is an effective at controlling parasites. And um, the reason that we want it to be this high is because we want to protect this for future use and we want to protect it whenever we use it in combination with a different drench. So let's say you didn't go through this test. You just kept using this dewormer here and um, it could be any of those, but say you use one dewormer and you just kept using it until it didn't work anymore. Uh, if it stopped working or you'd see maybe half the animals aren't getting any better, it's likely that you're close to 50% effective. Um, and that means that this dewormer is only killing half the worms and it's, un it's unlikely that this dewormer is going to be all that useful for us in the future. So in the past we typically recommended to use one dewormer till it stopped working, then switch to another uh, till it stopped working, and then maybe use them as a combination. And we want to advise against that, and here's why. So Theoretically, if we had said we had the same animals and they had a 5,000 egg per gram uh, parasite load, we used product one and it was 50% effective, and then we used product two, and since we used it till it stopped working too, it's only 50% effective. So 50% of 5,000 would be 2,500 eggs per gram. You kill half the parasites, but there's still 2,500 eggs per gram in the sample. Theoretically, drench two should kill half of these parasites, so we'd be left with 1,250 um, eggs per gram, or if we do the math, we only had a 75% reduction in parasite load. On the other hand, if we would have used this product until it got to 90% effective and then quit using it and switched to a separate product um, and then used it until it was 90% effective, and then added the two together as a combination, we can follow this um, you know, theoretical calculation that we would have had 5,000, we killed 90% of them with drug one, uh, we would have been left with 500. We killed 90% of the, the ones that remained in this 500 with drug two since we gave them together, and we would have only had close to 50 eggs per gram, um, uh, or only had parasites that were producing 50 eggs per gram, that would have given us a 99% effective kill rate, meaning that only 1% of parasites lived and are producing eggs out there compar uh, compared to what parasites were in the population before. And that's what we want to get to is a 99% uh, effective kill rate.